Elon Musk, welcome to London. Uh, must be a great honor to come and speak at the Royal Aeronautical Society. Um, it is. I'm, I'm very um, glad to be invited uh, and, and, and certainly feel honored. Let's talk about this historic mission you've just completed, the first contracted commercial resupply to the space station. You had a little bit of a wobble on the way up, didn't you? One of your engines let go. Tell us about that. Yeah. Um, so the Falcon 9 is designed to be able to lose up to two engines and still, um, and still complete its flight. So on the plus side, we, uh, we demonstrated that we can indeed complete a mission if we lose an engine, including in a, in a relatively violent way. On the other hand, we also certainly want to find out why that occurred and make, make sure to the best of our ability that it doesn't occur again. Looking from this side of the Atlantic, you appear to have put a bit of a frightener on Europe. Ministers are meeting in the next few days to consider upgrading or even replacing the Ariane rocket. What's your view when you look across the Atlantic? Ariane 5 has, has no chance. I mean, really, it's, I don't say that with a sense of bravado, but there's really no way for that vehicle to compete with Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Um, so if I were in the position of Ariane, I would really push for an Ariane 6. I think that's the right move. It's about price, isn't it? I mean, and you have really come in very, very low. Can you sustain those prices? Are they realistic? Yes, absolutely. Um, not only can we sustain the prices, the next version of Falcon 9 is actually able to go to a lower price. So if Ariane can't compete with the current Falcon 9, it sure as hell can't compete with the next one. And can you maintain the quality? I think this is, this is an issue. You're going Absolutely. to be turning out, I mean, I don't know how many Merlin engines a year to, to satisfy all, all of the launches. You're going to have quite a turnover of, of engine manufacturing. We're going to have a high volume of engines, but that's a good thing because as you, as you increase the volume of production you're able to, and, and you have more uh, test firings and more flights, you're able to increase the statistical reliability of, of the engines because you see, you see all the issues. The Falcon 9 Heavy is, I guess, the thing everybody's waiting for now. What difference is that going to make, having that vehicle available? So the, the Falcon Heavy is intended to be able to launch the largest satellites in the world and then some. So um, it, it's actually going to enable satellites that are conceivably twice as large as anything that exists today to be launched into orbit. You've talked about Mars in the past. How soon do you think you'll be able to do that? Well, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to send our first person to Mars in the 10 to 15 year time frame. So if we take the middle of that, it's probably around 12 years. As soon as that? Well, yes, we can't wait too long uh, because um, I don't want to be so old that I can't go.